Hello and welcome to this presentation on the latest upgrades to our Humanoid Robot Lola. In this talk I will give you a brief overview over the changes we made to the hard and software in order to make Lola ready for dynamic multi-contact locomotion. First of all I want to introduce myself. My name is Philipp Sabat and I'm a PhD student at the Chair of Applied Mechanics at the Technical University of Munich in Germany. I'm first and corresponding author of the conference paper related to this talk. The results shown in this presentation emerged from a collaboration between researchers at the Chair of Applied Mechanics, which are shown on the left, and a Chair for Computer-Aided Medical Procedures and Augmented Reality, shown on the right. The main objective for lagged robots is to prevent themselves from falling. Since in the real world all kinds of disturbances might occur, the robot has to implement some kind of reactive stabilization. On the right you see our human and robot Lola walking over an uneven wooden plate. This obstacle is not known to the robot, thus it cannot be considered your motion planning. Through a robust civilization framework, which is not in the focus of this talk, the robot is able to overcome this disturbance in most cases. But what if the disturbances get larger and the feet are not sufficient for stabilization anymore? This is where multi-contact locomotion comes into play. By multi-contact we mean additional support with the hands against the robot's environment such as tables, walls or handrails. The additional support should then improve robustness against unforeseen disturbances. We also have to clarify what we mean with the term dynamic. For us dynamic means fast walking while preserving the main characteristics of bipedal gait. For simplicity we also restrict ourselves to unilateral contacts. Finally we put our focus on the real-time execution of all involved algorithms. So how can we achieve dynamic multi-contact locomotion with Lola? For this we have to make extensive changes to the hardware, which has already been completed, and also to the software, which is only partly finished yet and has to be seen as work in progress. A limitation of the previous hardware was the hand design, which didn't feature a dedicated contact area or sensors to measure interaction forces. Moreover, the arms had a very limited workspace, especially in the lateral proximity of the robot. But also the torso frame had its issues. During regular walking experiments we observed severe oscillations of the upper body structure. Through an experimental model analysis on a real robot, we could identify the backbone as main source of this problem. Apart from that, the previous upper body design was quite rudimentary, which would not have been able to withstand the increased loads in our target scenarios. Concerning the software, the previous computer vision system assumed all objects to be obstacles, omitting a detailed surface model for planning contact points or a semantic classification. Moreover, the contact planning was restricted to foot contacts only. A naive extension of the search space to allow also hand contact showed to be infeasible for real-time execution. Finally, the robot localized itself only by autometry, which is naturally subject to drift. So let's continue with the redesign of the hardware, which allowed us to overcome the mentioned limitations for multi-contact scenarios. First of all, we would like to find the optimal arm topology, which means the optimal joint arrangement and segment proportions. For this we perform the kinematic optimization, where we first define various target scenarios the robot should be able to perform. Second, we initialize the optimization with a certain topology candidate. This allows us to evaluate the task space which we define as the position and orientation of the hand relative to the torso. For each voxel in a task space, we apply various local metrics, which are then summed up over a task-specific volume. After weighting of the metrics, we obtain a global cost which is used to find a better topology candidate. Through the kinematic optimization we found a topology which is optimal for our use case. In this animation you can see the degrees of freedom of the previous and new design. Compared to the previous design, the new arm features an additional revolute joint and modified link lengths. For actuation we make use of the modular joint design of Lola. The joint modules are a custom design which integrates a brushless DC motor, a harmonic drive gear, a motor side incremental encoder and a link side absolute encoder. We also use a custom housing to obtain maximum power density. To select modules which provide sufficient power, we chose the maximum torque of the drives according to the average strength of a human. Here we use military standards for maximum interaction forces. For making contact with the environment, we restrict ourselves to unilateral contact by a spherical hand coated with rubber. In order to provide measurements for the interaction force to the low-level controller, we integrate a commercial 6-axis force torque sensor into the hand. The main goal for the redesign of the torso frame was to counteract the identified stiffness problems. Thus we moved from a T-shaped frame of the previous design to a more cube-like scaffold to increase the second moment of area around the critical axis. 
During the redesign of mechanical structures, we used a finite element analysis for dimensioning critical parts in an iterative process. We defined different load cases for multi-content scenarios, where we assumed forces up to 100 newtons, which are applied to the hands along all three axes in space. The complete upper body has a consequent lightweight design. This led to an additional mass of less than 5 kg for the complete robot when compared to the previous version. In total, the new version of the robot weighs less than 70 kg at a height of 1 m and 76 cm. Extensive changes to the arm topology and mechanical structures led to a complete redesign of the upper body from scratch. This also includes the reintegration of core components, such as the inertia measurement unit, the commercial server drive controllers, the head as mounting for a new camera system for computer vision, the onboard PCs and finally the power distribution system. Note that Lola still has no integrated battery, which, however, might get integrated in a future revision of the robot. Beside the hardware upgrade, we also propose an extension of Lola software framework. In particular, we make changes to the representation of the environment, the computer vision system, the walking pattern generation module, and the stabilization and inverse kinematics module. Let's start with the environment model. The proposed model includes a representation of the terrain as a height map stored as a quad tree to provide different levels of detail. Moreover, an object database is maintained where each object is tagged with a semantic classification. This can be used to decide whether the robot is allowed to get in contact with this object or not. For finding an optimal contact point on the object, its surface is represented by an index triangle mesh. Finally, each object also stores a corresponding sweat sphere volume, which can be used for efficient distance calculations. The computer vision system has been redesigned from scratch. Of how many parts are finished, this has still to be considered as work in progress. For scene reconstruction, our system uses two pipelines. On the one hand, adaptive object extraction generates objects at an adaptive resolution to accelerate the conversion to swept sphere volumes. On the other hand, semantic scene completion predicts a completion for geometric shapes in a reconstructed scene. The visual localization is run by a SLAM algorithm, which uses frame-to-model iterative closest point tracking. The first task of the walking pattern generator is to find a sequence of discrete contact points for the feet and hands. We are currently working on a real-time multi-level graph search with subsequent pose refinement to find such a sequence. The discrete robot poses then have to be connected by smooth trajectories. To maintain balance, we use the set and beat concept in combination with a 5 mass model. Here, multi-contact effects are incorporated as planned external forces. In contrast to the context planning task, our trajectory generation algorithm is finished. The planned total contact range on the center of mass of the robot is then used by the stabilization and inverse kinematics module to compute an optimal contact range for each n effector. We obtain the optimum a solution of a quadratic program which takes typical contact parameters into account. We also extended inverse kinematics by a smooth bilinear interpolation between four different solutions. This allows us to blend one or both hands from task space to null space and vice versa. Let's move to our results. After finishing the hardware upgrade, we performed various tests to validate our design. Apart from testing the upper body by applying different loads, this included a second experimental model analysis. A comparison with the analysis of the previous system showed that the underside oscillations of the torso frame are gone. In the following videos, we show Lola performing dynamic multi-contact locomotion. Note that for these experiments, the computer vision system was inactive and contact points for feet and hands were manually set. However, trajectory generation and stabilization as proposed was active and validated on the new hardware. Currently, we are working on fully autonomous multi-contact locomotion. For this, the computer vision and contact planning modules have to be completed. For the near future, we plan to perform more tests and also improve robustness through fine-tuning of our algorithms. To close this presentation, I want to thank the German Research Foundation for funding this project. Moreover, I want to thank my colleagues and our students who helped in realizing the new version of Lola.